What is going on everyone? It is Catch back again with another video on the channel. It is time for another weekly catch up video covering the weekend's results around the world of European football and there are a lot of interesting and surprising results that were thrown up across the course of the weekend. Here are just a select few. We begin with Arsenal and Liverpool which is played at the Emirates and Arsenal have maintained their well, streak at the top of the table if you want to call it that with, with uh, by beating Liverpool 3-2 at home. Uh, they won in somewhat contentious uh, contentious um, circumstances, Bukayo Saka converting a late penalty to, to put Arsenal back in the lead, which they did hold. But I believe Arsenal are going to be a pretty good match for City this season. I still think Man City will run away with the title, but if Arsenal keep going the way they are, uh, and then I can't see why they can't you know match city pound for pound so to speak um they you know as i mentioned in the last video they've got a good young team arteta seems to be taking them away from the traditional wenger uh role as it is or as it was um and yeah it just seems to be a very positive vibe around the emirates uh, at the moment um you know they've had a, a decent start so far um can they continue i think it will um they look very very good at the moment and it's sort of slid it sort of shows the transitions between liverpool and arsenal arsenal were very up and down last year liverpool were very strong and this year it's a bit of role reversal uh liverpool are very up and down very inconsistent whereas arsenal seem to be going from strength to strength so you know you know outside of city i think arsenal are probably going to push them all the way um, but yeah, I think Arsenal have done really well at the moment, and uh, yeah, hopefully it continues for their fans. Next, we move over to the other side of uh, Merseyside, and it seems to be a struggle city for Merseyside teams at the moment, Everton and Liverpool, as Manchester United came from behind to beat uh, off a very fighting Everton outfit, and the big talking point out of the game was Cristiano Ronaldo's 700th club goal which he actually scored coming off the bench for an injured Anthony Martial. Um, so yeah, congrats to Ronaldo on 700 goals. It's a big, big achievement. Um, I guess the only thing you know that he's probably been saying in the dressing room and that he's probably been doing on social media is this. <laughs> sure. But I think uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is not done yet. I think he's probably got maybe till the end of the season, maybe one more in him. But after that, who knows? But Cristiano Ronaldo managed to score the second, or was it the first? I think it was the first, or the, we'll call it the second goal for Manchester United against Everton. And that actually pushes him up the table as well, which is good for United fans who have had a pretty decent, uh, probably a mixed start. They definitely have more positive results in recent weeks with Eric Ten Hag at the helm. And we'll see how it goes for United moving forward. Next, we move on to Newcastle, who battered Brentford at the weekend at St. James's Park 5-1. The big talking point out of this game was Bruno Gamares, or Bruno G, as I like to call him, scored a double for Newcastle, and he has shown the Geordie faithful that he has been a shrewd investment since they purchased him from Olympic Lyonnais back a couple oh was it last season i think it was last season um he's proven to be a key in that newcastle midfield and eddie house definitely seems to know how to get the best out of him and obviously with the saudi backing it's going to be pretty difficult to play newcastle this season that'll be a tricky opposition for anyone i think they're the uh ooh, they might be the only team don't quote me on this but i think they might be the only team that have actually managed to stop man city this season kept them to a three all draw uh, i think it was maybe the third or fourth game of the season so newcastle are doing very very well at the moment and the fans are loving it in the post mike ashley era so i guess we'll see how it goes for newcastle bruno g and eddie howe moving forward Moving on, we go to the London Stadium where West Ham managed to record a 3-1 victory over Fulham and their new signing, the big Italian forward Gianluca Scamacca, scored another brilliant goal for the Hammers against Fulham. And that actually means he's now scored in both of his uh, home home games for West Ham, if you will. His debut and his second game. And he's proven to be a pretty good investment so far for both West Ham and I'm sure for Italy in the future. But the Hammers seem to be on the mend. 
And Jared Bowen seems to be in the score books again. He scored a penalty. That got them the first goal. And yeah, West Ham seem to be doing pretty well. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully Skamaka can continue his scoring record because I'm sure it'll be both good for West Ham fans and Italy fans moving forward and into the future. Moving over to Italy, we go to the biggest clash in the Italian Serie A of the weekend. Milan at home to Juventus. And unfortunately for Juve fans, Juventus were no match for Milan as they breeze past Juventus 2-0 and it just shows another inconsistent display from Juventus, another poor performance and it sure sort of draws parallels with Liverpool this season. A couple of big clubs having a bit shocking starts at the moment and that's probably down to management and a few other things but how much longer can Juventus persist with Allegri? Sources have been saying Allegri has to the World Cup so we'll see what the results are like till then but after that who knows. Uh, but from what I understand, Juventus fans are not happy with Allegri and some of his decisions he's been making in recent times. So I guess we'll have to see and what comes of that. Continuing in the Italian league, we come to Napoli versus Cremonese. The Na Napoli were away in this game and they continued their unbeaten start to the season with a 4-1 win over struggling Cremonese. And to be perfectly honest, I think Napoli are now the favourites for the Scudetto in the Serie A. I don't think anyone's going to be able to stop them. They seem to be in this really good positive mindset, positive mind frame, if you will. And I don't think, I don't really see anyone stopping them. Maybe Milan, if anyone, but Inter are struggling. Juventus have been struggling for quite some time. Roma are up and down as well. Lazio never seem to be there. So I think it's Napoli's to take, but I've you know probably been of the opinion that Napoli should have won a couple more Scudettos in previous years. But, you know, I've lacked a few things, whether it be a striker, the, the right personnel, the manager. But, you know, I think they seem to be finally getting it right. And hopefully, you know, Napoli are my pick for this year's uh, Scudetto in the Serie A. And hopefully we'll see them do it. Finally, we head to Germany. And the, the real surprising story of this of the Bundesliga weekend, in my opinion, was the fact that Union Berlin have been able to maintain their lead at the top of the Bundesliga. Normally it's a Bayern Munich affair and they run away with it already. But Union Berlin managed to score in, the, no, I wouldn't call it dying stages, but the later stages of the game against Stuttgart it was. They beat them 1-0 thanks to a Paul Jackal header in the 76th minute and it maintains their lead at the top of the Bundesliga. Will they stay there? I don't think so. I think either Bayern or Borussia Dortmund will probably get there. Um, but it's good to see someone else other than Bayern or Borussia Dortmund at the top of the table for a change in the Bundesliga. But that has been the end of the video, my friends. Please like, share and subscribe. And I will see you with another video very, very soon. See ya. Bye.